Hey folks, welcome back to the Rock and Sea Homestead. My name is Lance. I want to welcome you to our channel. And tonight we're going to show you how we process our milk after we get done milking the goats and how we clean all the tubing for our milk machine. We had a lot of questions about that on our last video and we're going to talk about it tonight and show you our complete steps and kind of walk through that with you guys. All right, so we're in here. We got the milk. The girls are kind of slacking off a little bit, but that's the milk we got for tonight. So first thing I do is I take off all the tubing from the machine, from the milking jar, and just put that in the sink. So if any milk escapes, I don't have to worry about it getting on the counter into the bucket. So now from here, how we actually filter the milk. So first thing I do is I wash my hands, because no matter how much you uh, try to keep clean out there, you will get some dirt and that kind of stuff. You don't want that on your filter. So, and we store our milk in half gallon mason jars. This has been sanitized and stored. And I've tried different methods for filtering. I've used, you know, uh, cheesecloth, um, all different sorts, coffee filters, those kind of things. I found these online. They're actually a milk filter. They come 200 per box. I use one new one every time I milk. So I got plenty of them. They're just a little round disc. And I just get it nice and wet. And then we have a little funnel and it has an additional little, little, little filter here. And I just kind of push that down in there so even as I can get it. And then I just put that on the on the half gallon jar and then I start filtering. So that was the amount that I hand milked. And then this is the amount that actually came out of the pump or with the pump, I should say. And this you just have to take it nice and slow and it'll just filter through that and catch any kind of dirt and debris, hair, anything else that may be in there. You have a lot less of that in this portion since this was through the milk machine, but I still do the same thing no matter either way. And then just to be sure everything is filtered properly, I actually put it back into this container and then put it back into that. So it's kind of a, a triple filter. All right, the milk is filtered. And at this point, we just put a, a piece of masking tape with a date, stick it in the fridge, let it cool down and we'll use it later on. All right, now since we got all the milk strained, now it's time for the cleanup. Of course, remove the filter, and you can see there's definitely, it definitely does catch some stuff. That's great. Now, I do try to get the water as hot as my hands can stand it, which it takes a little while for that to heat up there. But while this is heating up, I'll let you know kind of what we're using. So we have a really long, kind of hard handled bottle brush. It's really good. We went through about three bottle brushes so far, and this is the last one we got, and it's working really, really good. Sturdy bottle brush is needed, especially if you have a long jar, get in there, get it cleaned. And then with the Milky Machine actually came this one, and it's designed to go into the, the, the tubes for that. And then another one that came with the Milk Machine was a long snake one that runs through the tubes and we'll show you how all these things work together here. As we get along, water's heating up, so that's good.
All right, so now we got all of the, the bowls and the, and the containers cleaned. Now comes the, the fun part, which is the tubes. So I like to try to get as, I'll try to rinse out milk coming out of it. And you guys can't see it in there, but water's coming out. So out of these tubes, the bottom one is the liquid tube. This is the suction tube. So no water's gonna come out of this one while I have it connected. I just try to rinse all that stuff out as much as I can. Now, if this is the first time of you taking this apart, you may want to take a picture or two just so you can put it back together. Because I know I had trouble trying to put it back together the first time that I did it. And because uh, all this stuff comes connected when you get it from, at least mine did. But the first things I do is just try to work the tubes off of these nozzles here. Some are harder than others. They've got a little bit easier over time. have to kind of work it back with the nail and so that's one of the, the suction tubes there and now you have two pieces like this and they're connected with a little wide piece and again you take all those little tubes off because the the little snake cleaner doesn't go through the plastic part. So you have to take the tubes off of that. So we have all of the tubes, everything is disconnected. Now on these, this is all like, looks like all one piece, but this kind of comes up which allows this to push inside. So you can get that all cleaned and everything cleaned in there. And the first couple times I did this, it was pretty nerve wracking. Okay, now we gotta clean it. All right, so we got everything cleaned up. We're just gonna go put this in the drying rack. But before we did that, I did wanna talk about a couple things. So when you're taking it all apart, one of the things that we did to kind of help us was put color, like electrical tape on certain things. So when, the, when we first got the device, it had these little stickers that two, three, one, and they were here. And we tried to write them on there and they kind of washed off. So we eventually went it up with the electrical tape. It's worked great. So I know kind of which pipe needs to go where, all based on that, especially it helps us when we're connecting it up, when you're uh, setting up your machine to milk the goats, because if you put these in the wrong one, it'll suck milk into the machine, which isn't good. Trust me, I've done it. Uh, not a good thing. But uh, also another thing is all the, all the cleaning devices, so like the, like the uh, scrubby brushes and all those kind of things, we only use that for the milk. We don't use it for anything else in the kitchen just to make sure it's nice and sanitary and everything is as sanitary as possible. So once we get them all clean, we kind of shake them out a little bit, then we put these on a drying rack. This is just a normal clothes drying rack and I have a towel about, about halfway down just so it kind of keeps things from dripping on the floor. And I'll just lay all these things out here. and just let these dry. And then tomorrow when I'm ready to milk, I'll put it all together. Or if it's, you know, in the morning time, I may put it together halfway through the day or whatever, just whenever they're dried. And at this point, we'll just let it air dry until we're ready to use them again. And you guys can see, we have quite a bit of milk. I've been saving this up for a couple batches of cheeses here, but we have probably one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven gallons of milk. 
I'll make a couple batches of mozzarella cheese and uh, give us some to drink for cereal, whatever else. But we did have to get another fridge. And we've been kind of thinking about it anyways, but we just had so much milk we couldn't process it quick enough. And sometimes for certain cheese recipes, you have to save up a little bit. So we got us a little fridge back here, which has kind of helped us out with some other things on the farm with frozen veggies and that kind of stuff. So it's worked out really good. But it's one of the things you have to can kind of consider when you start doing milk processing and all those kind of things. How are you going to store the milk or and how quick are you going to turn it over? You know, if you turn it over really quick, may not be a need for it, but for us, definitely was. Just with, especially with just two people in the household, definitely too much milk for us. But we love the cheese and we're processing it and freezing it and gonna keep it for the winter. Well folks, that is how we process our milk, clean the tubes, and kind of break it down and make sure it's all nice and sanitary. And if you guys haven't followed us on Facebook or Instagram, those links are down below. And again, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, it'll be a perfect time to do that. Make sure you ring the bell so you get notified every time a video comes out. And if you know anybody that may like this contact, please share our content with them. We'd really appreciate that. And from our homestead of years, have a blessed day, and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye. Thank you.